Allow me to summarize the biblical narrative of the history of the world. Oh good, so are you going to read from something like this, or are you going to make things up in your imagination? Yeah, you want me to prove it? My book that I'm writing is called Refute This, I Dare You. <laughs> are you serious? What's your second book going to be called? I'm right, fight me bro? The Bible says a group of angels got together and decided to come down here because they thought women were beautiful. No, the Bible does not explicitly say that. That is one interpretation of Genesis 6, 1 to 4. But there are alternative ways to read that passage that do not invoke heavenly beings. See this video I made for an alternative. And those teraphim, those angels that quit heaven for earth, mated with women. There were giants in the land in those days. Also incorrect because Nephilim does not mean giants. It more likely in Hebrew means fallen ones. And we're not entirely sure if they are the offspring of the sons of God from verse 2 because it just says they were in the land in those days. They taught men technology. There was a worldwide civilization. The evidence is still here. Nope. Nope. Nothing about a worldwide civilization or angels teaching technology to humans in here. Was there industry? Sure, the carbon-12 that was left over in the atmosphere completely skews the carbon dating today. Okay, an obvious misunderstanding of how carbon dating works, but you said you were giving the biblical narrative. This is not the biblical narrative. When the ice caps melt, the deep time hoax is gonna go right out the window, but they're already repositioning to bring you right around to that. Biblical narrative! What do ice caps have to do with the biblical narrative? Anyway, God flooded the earth. Killed them all but eight. When the fountains of the deep broke up, the supercontinent broke up. Nope, no, no, no supercontinent is in the Bible. In fact, Genesis 2 says the Tigris and Euphrates River already existed. If before the flood there was a supercontinent that was broken up into its current form today, the land would have been entirely different. The Tigris and Euphrates would not have existed yet. I'll cite all my sources. Where do you think I get this from? Well, you're not getting it from here, that's for sure. And there was a man on Noah's boat that loved that old way. His descendants tried for that empire again immediately, made their way right back to the site where the foundations of the old buildings were still there. There is nothing in the Bible about the Tower of Babel being built on foundations from a city from before the flood. But that's hard, and they're not gods, and it's not as good as it could be. Let's call these fellas back down, NASA. Come on, fellas, here's some naked photos. You liked all this once. You hear that, ladies? <laughs> Stop posting your nudes online. Your real customers are in space. Can't you come like it again, says Operation Paperclip. So that's where that Microsoft Paperclip has been this whole time. He better not be sending his nudes into space. So if you're going to claim you're going to give the biblical narrative, give the biblical narrative. Don't make up some sci-fi woo-woo nonsense and pass it off as the biblical narrative.